Yeah, I'm Mike Fletcher. I'm a saxophonist and composer. Um, I'm originally from Birmingham, but I now split my time between Spain and, and the UK. Um, so I'm living in Spain. I'm studying a, a PhD in composition in the Birmingham Conservatoire. And so today we're talking uh, talking about your your upcoming gig uh, in in uh, the Edinburgh Hall, uh, which you're presenting as part of the, the Rhythm Changes Conference uh, with with Anna Mona. Yeah, so I have a, a large ensemble of 12 piece jazz orchestra, which will be performing on the 16th of April in the Adrian Hall Hall. Um, and we've been lucky enough to have a great composer, Anna Meredith, writing some new music for, for the ensemble as well. So we're going to be presenting her new work and some of my original large ensemble material as well. Is the way you write affected by the players you, or you're working with in terms of when, you, when you're thinking about what you write or, or is it specifically very much coming from a, 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 a sound you want to create and then you go out and find the best the people to create that sound with for you? I think it's kind of a bit of both. I don't... Mm, there are certain players that I know, for example the saxophone section is... I said the, the band is a smaller, kind of reduced big band, so it's not the traditional full um, for big bands. So we have three saxophones, three trumpets and three trombones, which makes it a little bit more flexible. So for example, the sax section, I have Louis Mather and Tom Challenger, who I, I know are incredibly versatile musicians. And this, this extends to the whole, the whole band, in, in fact. Um, I'm really interested in writing music that can switch between more traditional idioms and much, much more open, much more contemporary idioms as well. And having guys who are equally fluent in both, you know, there'll be a section where we just where there's a, a very traditional soloing over a chord sequence, which can then quite quickly shift into a, a more free, um, more free area. And having guys who are, who are equally conversant in both idioms is really important. So I kind of it's there's not a conscious process of right when I write this music and then I'm going to find people to to play it. But it's not, these are the guys I want to play with. It's kind of having played with them and having known, having learned through playing with, with these guys how, how we all interrelate with free jazz, improvised music, traditional jazz, a lot, even contemporary classical aspects as well. Those are all kind of influencing my, my process. So the pieces that I've written for this ensemble come from different places. But that's the general, the general idea is that it, it should incorporate everything in a fairly free way. And I guess the further complication here is that we are, you know, an, an extra element is having to make some sense that you're working with Anna, Anna mm. Meredith this time around. You know, I'm using your, I know you've met Anna and, and spoken and talked musically and she's aware of your group, but that, that's someone else fighting for that group just in terms of from a different perspective. Yeah, I'm really interested to see what, how she deals with that because for her, I mean, one thing we take for granted as jazz musicians is we know how we work. We, you know, we've grown up playing in this music. We know what's a lot of what's involved in that process. We, I mean, although we, we might not necessarily discuss it explicitly, the the kind of the balancing of improvisation and composition is quite mm, it's quite common. If somebody comes in with a, a, a piece of a melody written out on a from a real book, from, you know, like a printed piece of paper. We can create a whole performance from that without giving it a second thought. But for somebody who's not necessarily used to to working in that idiom, it's going to be a very different experience. So seeing how how she approaches writing for improvisers, it's going to be a fascinating experience. I'm really, really looking forward to to what she comes up with. Have you? I mean, have you spoken much to her about kind of what she's planning, or, or is she kind of holding it all back and kind of going to see how it goes tomorrow? Yeah, she's not. Well, we haven't mm, we haven't spoken a great deal. We organise a lot of the logistical stuff. But I know she's bringing some, some sketched out ideas that she wants to try out with the band. But apart from that, at the moment, I'm, I'm still waiting to see what, what comes out. And then, um, I mean, obviously, as well as Anna's music and the new piece that kind of she's working on with you, there's, there's a lot of your music that you're performing in the concert. Is, it, is there much new music? Is, there, is it kind of reworkings? I mean, are you bring back some of the stuff you've done from previous projects, like I know you did the Reich project here and some material that you still, I think, have around from that point was. What, what are you hoping to include in the concert? Yeah, a little bit of a mix of everything, actually. Um, there's a lot of music which I've been writing over the last two or three years for this ensemble, which I've never performed. So it's going to be the first performance in music that's not necessarily brand new. Um, there are new pieces that I've been writing right until today about 
just getting everything ready, which the other thing being is like is wanting to kind of to tip my hat to the projects we've done before. Um, so yeah, I'm going to bring a couple of the right pieces back, which I've, I've reworked for the, for the large ensemble. And then also a piece that we played when Andrew D'Angelo came over to work with the band in 2013. So we're kind of revisiting some of that stuff as well. Um, what What's next for you? Right? What else is going on? What, where, you know, do you, you know, where's this going to go next? Or what other things have you got coming up? Well, I've got um, I've got a few different projects cooking. So we've got my trio with Jeff Williams and Ollie Bryce, which we toured last year, is coming back for a little mini tour of the UK at the end of this month with a gig in Charlton Fest Festival. Um, we are playing with a friend of mine from Spain, Julian Sanchez, who's a trumpet player who I met living in Spain. He played with us when we were over. Jeff and Ollie came over to Spain last year, so we played with him there. And there was just this instant connection, so I was like, we, we should bring him back and try and do something. Um, I've also got a new band which I've formed with guys in Spain as well, which is, we've just, we just finished doing a little tour over there to kind of get things moving. And we're going to do another one in November. With this big band I've got a couple of ideas cooking which haven't taken any, any roots yet, but it might involve Spain and the, Spain and the UK again. I'm trying to work on ways of, of bringing people over here and taking a few of us over there as well. So yeah, there's lots going on. So that's a, that's a kind of a new new area for you to develop that kind of partnership between the kind of the two kind of homes of yours. Yeah, that's the thing. The more I the more time I spend there, the more I feel like I'm sort of converting into a an adopted Spaniard as well. And there's such a lot of great scene, some really really interesting musicians who probably don't get the same recognition as they would do if they were from a more recognised jazz background. Because jazz in Spain is still quite mm, under recognised, I think. And I'm really interested to, to see how those guys would would mix and fit in with the guys I play with in the UK and vice versa as well. I'd like to to try and take some more of these guys back out with me to to experience the great music that's getting made in Spain as well.